Hi, thanks for tuning in. This is PageKey Solutions. My name is Steve, and we're on part four of our essential sorts explained and implemented in Python, insertion sort. So yep, it's the last one in the series. We have come to this at long last, talking about big O notation and the like. Bubble sort and insertion sort are basically on the same level, n best case, n squared average and worst case, which it looks like quick sort and merge sort kind of beat them out there. However, we will see how this uh, has a slight caveat. And if you look at space complexity, they do great. They're both in place, so you don't need temporary arrays or any extra memory for them. Insertion sort itself. It is in place, it is a stable sort. In place means no temporary arrays, like I just said. Stable sort means if you have more than one attribute per object, like if it's not just numbers, but it's like a linked list and you're sorting on the first element, everything stays in the same order if it's equal. So if you have three linked lists in the array somewhere that all have the first element four, and then the rest of the list is different, and then you sort it, they'll still be in the same order. Whereas if it's not a stable sort, you can't depend on that. Another advantage of insertion sort is that it's typically faster for very small arrays than those divide and conquer algorithms such as merge sort and quick sort. So if you have 7 to 50 elements or something along those lines, insertion sort can be a very good choice. It's very similar to something called selection sort if you want to check that out at your own discretion. And another thing to note is that this algorithm is used intuitively by people sorting cards. So if you're sorting cards, just pay attention next time you do it and you might find yourself using insertion sort. Basic steps. So the big idea is we're going to swap each element into place as we go, and left of the element is assumed sorted. So we're going to have part of the array that we've already gone through, and it's basically just picking the card out and putting it in the right place on the left-hand side where we already have our sorted array growing until we have everything in the sorted. So how does that work step by step? For each element, we compare it to the element to the left, and if the left element is greater, we swap it out moving it into the sorted part of the array. And then we're going to move to the left one and compare it yet again. And we'll continue until there are no more elements to the left, meaning that it was the smallest so far in that sorted partition. Or uh, if the less element, or if the left element is less in the sorted half, then we're done. So that might seem a little confusing, but we'll jump into the visualization, which will show us exactly what that means. So for insertion sort, we're going to have I, which is going to go through each element except for the zeroth element <laughs> and j which is kind of a sub index we'll see how it works but basically we're going to start at index one and we're going because there's nothing to the left of this guy in position zero to check so we'll start in position one and we'll have j and j minus one and we're going to compare j and j minus one basically that left element is the left element greater than the right element? In this case, it's true, so we're going to swap out. Next, we're going to break, because as we move j over, we're going to move j over uh, for each i, j is going to go all the way to the left. So we move j over, and it's no longer greater than zero. It's equal to zero. So we just break out. That's one of our two conditions. If j is not greater than zero, we're going to break out. So we're going to move up i. i moves up by one, and then we reset j to i itself. Now we're comparing i, or uh, basically j to j minus 1, those two elements. If you'll note, everything to the left of i is sorted. 2 and 5 are sorted. So we're taking this element that hasn't been sorted yet and comparing it to the greatest element in that sorted part of the array. It is not greater, so we're going to break. We move i up 1. Now we have a 3 element sorted partition. 2, 5, and 7 are all sorted. And we'll compare j and j minus 1. 7 and 3. 7 is greater than 3. We'll swap it out, move j down one, and continue. We ask the same question, is three greater than five? It is, or I'm sorry, is five greater than three? It is, swap her in, and move j down. Now is two greater than three? It is not. So we've effectively taken three from this position way over here, and swapped it down until it found its new place in the sorted part of the array, and we break. We'll move i up one. Now our sorted part is two, three, five, and seven and we need to find 4's place. Comparing 4 to the previous element, is 7 greater than 4? It is, we need to swap. And now we'll move j down by 1, following 4 along the way, and we'll compare 5 and 4. 5 is also greater than 4, which means 4 has to continue moving downward. We swap it out, and now is 3 greater than 4? It is not, so we're gonna break. Now that we've gone from i equals 1 all the way to the end of the array, everything is sorted, so isn't that beautiful? 
Look at this, two, three, four, five, seven, sorted perfectly. So the actual code that makes this happen looks just like this for each I in the range starting at one to the end of the array, to the length of the array. First, we're just going to set J equal to I. We have the condition, our two conditions were J is greater than zero and the left element is greater than the right element. In other words, J hasn't gone off the end of the left side of the array and the left element needs to be switched with the right element. We will swap, so we use our temp value to swap. We'll hold on to R of J and you know how to swap things. R of J to the minus one, set that to the temp value and then we subtract J. So that's really all there is to it. Very straightforward once you know how to visualize it. And that's all there is for insertion sort. So it was a quick, uh, quick discussion. Uh, once again, I'll show you how to get to the source code, tests, and issues. And you can get involved by making issues, cloning the repository, and trying things out yourself, and the like. So if you go to github.com slash stephengrace slash YouTube, you will find the repository where I'm keeping all this stuff. Go to the sorts folder, click on insertion sort.py. There she is. That is the code that we just talked about with a few extra comments for you. And then the test code is right here. If you want to run the test code, you can use python 3 -m unit test and then type the name of the test and it will run the test for you. And if you have an issue, just click on issues, new issue, type your issue, tell me what you saw, what you wanted to see, or just whatever comments you have, and I'll be happy to get back to you. It's the last episode in the series, but I still have to give credit to those who helped out. I appreciate the free icons on flaticon.com. I got the various icons throughout the lessons from these people on there. Smash icons and free pick. Check them out. And time and space complexity was found at bigocheatsheet.com. Thanks again. Uh, subscribe to PageKey Solutions for more lessons. We'll be going through some cool new stuff soon. And thanks for watching.